Two years ago, I was in a really rural area of northern Burma. I was standing in a bamboo hut, and I was dressed from head to toe in local women's clothing, with a scarf around my head to disguise me. And I was hiding from the police. I was scared. I was scared because the police were looking for me. But all I could think at that moment was, I need to get out of here, and I need to get these photographs developed to show people what these children are living through every day due to the current conflict. Burma has been in a state of civil war for more than 60 years, and the people of their own country are the ones who are suffering. Now, I learned about this through the stories of journalists and through photographs of photojournalists. But they weren't the people who were directly being affected, and so that's when I decided to create a project called "Through the Eyes of an Internally Displaced Person." Essentially, refugees within their own country. I gave cameras and a notebook to 30 children and asked them to photograph their everyday lives. A lot of these children were scared, and I had to work to gain their trust. I needed to show them that they were important, their lives mattered, and their voices needed to be heard. I needed to share their stories and show that the conflict that they're having to live through has made them live in the confinement of the invisible walls of an IDP camp. A lot of the photographs varied from things that made them smile, a flower, children playing, or the innocence from within. To the dignity that they've lost due to the conflict, and the struggles they live through every single day. This photograph was taken by a 12-year-old girl who lives in the Rakhine camp. This camp holds the Rohingya Muslims. To her, this is an innocent photograph of children playing in a flooded field. But what she didn't realize was just along the horizon, where those trees stand, was the Andaman Sea. Where countless boats were taking hundreds of Muslim Rohingya on what they thought was a voyage to safety and a better life, but what we later found in the news was that smugglers were taking these people out to sea, leaving them there abandoned, stranded to starve. This photograph was taken by a 14-year-old boy. He named it Sunset Shower. He told me that he wanted to show their life in the camp. They had no money, no work, no education. They didn't even have enough dignity to be able to shower in privacy. Now I'm standing in this bamboo hut, dressed from head to toe in disguise, and I'm so frustrated. I need to get out of here, and I need to show people these cameras and the pictures that these children have taken. And so I see the police. Further down the path, go into another house, and I think this is it. This is my chance. It's now or never. And so I run as fast as I can. I don't look back. I look in front of me, and I see the boat, the boat that's going to take me down the river and across to safety. My heart is beating so fast; I can feel it in my throat. Now you can see me standing here today. I made it home. I made it back to my family and my friends. People ask me, "Weren't you scared?" And I tell them, at that moment, fear for me was simply overpowered by the need to help other people. But fear for these children is simply an everyday feeling. Some of these children don't make it home safe. They don't make it back to see their friends and their family. Now, when I first started this project. I intended to raise awareness, but I understand that raising awareness just simply isn't enough. But I can also tell you, I don't know what is enough. I asked the woman in this photograph what she was doing. She said, "Waiting for nothing." And so, I reflect back on this moment. And I think about: Did I take action? 
Do I not? Do I do nothing or do I do something? I decided to do something. But there's nothing special about me. I decided not to let fear control me and do some, something. But for these children, it's not that simple. But I can also tell you, everyone in this room today has the power to do just that, to do something. Thank you. <laughs>